In this video, I want to demonstrate a more flexible way of working with arrays in Excel. If you already lost interest, I understand it sounds boring, but this is a huge time saver. So I want to jump right in before your forehead makes contact with your desk. For the purposes of this video, think of an array as an ordered sequence of variables. It is merely a data structure consisting of a collection of variables or elements. We will be using numbers, but it could really be anything. The reason they're easy to work with is that each variable or element in the array can be identified by its location in the array, which is known as the array index. Array formulas in Excel are consistently referred to as formulas that require you press Control, Shift, and Enter simultaneously whenever you need to enter an array formula. And we need this definition to distinguish between working with arrays and what people call array formulas because there are better ways to work with arrays in Excel that are far more flexible. As an example, let's use a common array formula with the function equals transpose. So here we have a pretty simple PP&E schedule with capital expenditures running across the top. And what we need to do is to get these values to list vertically. To do this with the transpose function using an array formula, you would highlight the five periods and input equals transpose, and then select your values, close paren, and then press control, shift, enter simultaneously. It works pretty well, but there's a couple catches. The first is that you cannot change anything about this array. So if you want to delete an individual value, Excel will make it abundantly clear that that's not an option. And this can be frustrating because there might be times where you want to change the entire structure of a model by deleting a row or column, and you'll find that an array somewhere in your model will stop you. So to delete an array, you have to select all of it and then press delete. What frustrates me most about arrays though is this. If you input your formula, and press Control, Shift, and Enter to create an array, you will find that the function does not work when you paste it down for all other relevant periods. So that's frustrating, but fortunately, Excel has functions that create arrays that allow you to work around this issue. And you can tell that this isn't an array formula because it's missing the brackets that sit outside of the function, which I can demonstrate quickly with Control Shift Enter, and then by showing you the formula bar above. It's these brackets that indicate an array formula. If we look at our new formula with the index function, you'll see that those brackets are missing. So let's look at how the index function accomplishes this. First, we're selecting the array and then telling it to return the first value in that array. As the formula is pasted down, the period number increases which pulls the next value in the array. And the nice thing about this solution is you can delete values and you can also paste the formula down. So the same result with a little bit more flexibility. So with that explanation out of the way, let's look at how to work with arrays without using quote unquote array formulas. Even more helpful than what we just worked through are the arrays you can create by nesting a function inside another function. Some Excel functions appear to behave a little differently when nested. And to demonstrate, let's look at equals offset. Equals offset can be used to return values provided a reference and a location. So here your reference is cell L6. We have a row value of zero a column value of zero, and a height of one, and width of one. What that means is that from the reference cell, we've told the equal offset function to return the value that is zero rows below the reference cell and zero columns to the right of the reference cell, and to return an array that has a height of one and a width of one. So it's basically just returning the reference cell. If you change the value for columns, equal offset will return the various values in that array. 
that correspond with that column number. But then if you nest offset inside of a different function, the offset function will return the array. And to visualize the array returned, you can highlight the function and press F9. So based on our inputs, we have the offset function with a row value of 0, column value of 0, a height of 1, and a width of 3. So from the reference cell of L6, the offset function is returning the first three values. And because it's nested within the sum function, your formula returns the sum of those three values. And you'll see that as we expand on the width, the values summed increase. And you can really get pretty creative once you understand how to nest these functions. For a couple other simple examples, you can use the small function, which will return the kth smallest value, which here we've identified as 1 for the smallest value overall, and the array returned by your offset function. Again, press F9, and clearly 750,000 is your smallest number. And that's what the formula returns. Below we have k equal to 5, so it's returning the fifth smallest number in an array with five values, so effectively returning the largest number. And then below we've basically done the opposite with the large function. I'll make this template available for download so you can play with it at your leisure. And I'll also try to include a couple examples that are a little bit more complex that allow you to really work with data in arrays so that you can see a little bit more about how useful this is and how much time it will save you in the long run. All right, team, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.